Okay, so this is a quick video on real nth roots, and I'm going to try not to spend too much time on this definition for you. I'm going to ask you before we get started, don't give up on me too soon, because you have to kind of go through this, but once I show you how this is applied, it actually makes perfect sense. It sounds like, I don't know, it sounds tough at first, but try to hang in there with me just for a couple minutes and see if this doesn't make some sense. So here's what we're talking about here. We're talking about nth roots. If n is odd, then a has one real nth root. And here's two things. One, that this is in the form of a radical. That This is the nth root of a. But you can also write the nth root of a as a to the 1 over n power. Where does the n come from? It comes from the index here. And where does this 1 come from? It comes from the power of a. So if you think about it this way, you could say, okay, well, the square root, how about this, the third root of a is the same as saying, let's do it this way. We agree that we have a, we have a to the first power, right? It would be the same as saying a to the 1 over 3 power. And let me say this to you. If that's all you get from this video is this little fact right here, you've, you've won. You had a victory today because this screws people up more than anything I know. So here's something for us to think about, okay? Now, we're going to go through the proof of all this in a second. Makes, it'll make perfect sense. It says, if n is even and a is greater than 0, then a has two real nth roots. And one of them is the nth root of, is plus or minus the nth root of a. They are, plus or minus the nth root of a, equivalently said, a to the 1 half power, to the 1 over nth power. What does that mean? Here, it, well, here's an example. Um, the uh, square, uh, square root of Hello. The square root of 4, so we could write it the square root of 4 this way, or if you wanted to see it, you could say the square root of 4. And the square root of 4, if you think about it, is equal to, well, 2, plus, uh, two times 2 is 4, so we know it's going to be 2, it's so positive 2. But if you think about it, negative 2 times negative 2 is also equal to positive 4, so those are the two solutions. How else could you write this? We're suggesting here that the square root of 4 is equivalently written as... 4 to the 1 half power, and those two answers there are the same two answers, right? So this is two answers. The answer to the square root of 4, what's the square root of 4? Well, it's positive 2, and it's or it's negative 2, because positive 2 times positive 2 is, and that would be true. Let's look at another one really, really quickly. Look at this again. So what if we have, um, let's take is it fourth root. Let's take the fourth root of 16. Well, we know... Fourth root means some number times itself four times. So 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is equal to 16. So the answer is 2, isn't it? Right? But if you look at it, a positive times a positive times a positive times a positive is a positive. But look, we could also use negative 2. Because negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4 times negative 2 is negative 8 times negative 2 again is positive 16. So our two answers are plus or minus 2. So that's why they're saying 2 real roots. And if I knew what the 8th or 10th root of something was, I'd tell it to you. But what I know is that we're going to get pairs of numbers. So there'll be an even number. So if it's a negative times a negative times a negative times a negative, an even number of times, the product will be positive. And of course, no matter how many times you multiply a positive times a positive, you get a positive. I'm going to show you some proof in a second. I want to show you that. This one makes perfect sense to me. If n is even and a is 0, then a has, <coughs> has one real nth root. And what is the nth root? It's, right? Okay, is equal to zero. So if, if n is even and a is less than zero, so now we have even, so look at this for a second. Here's an example, this one. So if n is even and a is less than zero, then a has no real roots. Well, let, let a be... Um, how about that negative 4 instead of 4, negative 4? And we want the square root of that. And people are saying, well, it's negative 2. Well, think about that. Is, is negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4, right? So you can't multiply any two numbers together, the same numbers, and get anything but a positive number back, right? So take negative 9 times negative 9. Well, negative 9 times negative, the negative times a negative is a positive. So that's the point here is that it's not possible. In the same way, if you had the fourth root of something. So we did the fourth root of 16 up here. Well, what about the fourth root of negative 16? And you might say, well, Charlie, that's negative 2. Well, is it? Negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. 
forget, uh, for a second, forget about the arithmetic of just, let's just multiply the signs. Negative times a negative is a positive. Times a negative is a negative. Times a negative is a positive. But we need negative. So we can't have, we can't take, as they say, an even root of an odd number. Can't take an even root. Uh, whoa. All right, I know, I know, you got me. You can't take an even root of a negative number. You cannot take an even root of a negative number. It doesn't exist because there's no way to get a negative number back, okay? So here are some examples. Let's take, um, let's, let's take some examples here. Let's take uh, the third root of negative 125. Well, we have a is a negative number, and the root is odd. So we go up here, we say... All right, good. So this makes perfect sense all the way through, doesn't it? It doesn't matter how, it doesn't matter what kind of number we put in here. Can we take an odd root? It's only going to have one solution, isn't it? In this case, it's, the answer is going to be negative 5, right? Why is that true? Because negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5. Let's just do the signs first. And we have a negative times a negative is a positive times a negative is a negative. So there's that. 5 times 5 times 5, 125. If we tried to use positive 5, it wouldn't work. Well, what if we did a very, very similar looking problem, very similar looking problem, and we said, well, what's the third root of positive 125? You say, oh, well, this is a positive number. Oops, sorry. And we're taking an odd root. Isn't this the plus or minus 5 thing? And no, I don't, I don't think that it is because, well, let's try that. Let's try 5 times 5 times 5. He's just going to do the signs first. This is a positive. This is a positive. This is a positive. A positive times a positive times a positive is a positive. And remember, we have positive 125 in here. 5 times 5 times 5 is 125. So you say, well, what about if we use negative? Well, let's just check that, right? So we're just checking this math, and we're saying negative times a negative times a negative. A negative times a negative is a positive but a positive times a negative is a negative. That doesn't work, right? So this wouldn't work. So there's only going to be one solution, right? This is really, really doable stuff for you guys. Um, before we go, you know what? Can I just give you this little gift? And this is going to be another great thing, especially as you get into higher mass. That I just want to remind you that if you have a to the power of mn, what you really have here is a well, there's a bunch of ways to write it. A to the m to the nth. Whoops. I didn't mean that. Uh, to the 1 over n. Or, or we could also write this as, we could also write this as, we could also write this as the nth root of A to the m. So here we have the index the index comes out of the denominator and right and this power right here is this power right here so we can dissect this it's one of those things you just have to get used to it but you're you can really really do this and this is going to pay off for you so try this try this just see if you can move stuff around uh, I think I'm gonna let you go because I think I kept you long enough but some really important stuff. With go back to the rules for a second. Look, I know this is a really uh, it's a pain in the neck to have to memorize all this stuff, but it makes sense when you do it. And I know a lot of uh, high school teachers they want to see this. They want to see that you know the rules. Let me just be really honest with you. I just want to see you be able to use the rules and know what your expectations should be. So okay, I'm looking forward to your comments. Keep studying. Proud of you.